which formats or delivery methods would be most effective for the kind of training we've talked about? Yes, so this is going to be a very general answer because uh, this is what I do. This is why we are why we are um, why we are doing needs analysis very very thoroughly and design. Right. Um, I know people just usually just sit down with their PowerPoint or or uh, or a video video script and they or rather they start to create a PowerPoint and then they teach what they think. But when you flip it and you do a very very thorough needs analysis and then you design your program based on the results of the needs analysis and the goals and the and the metrics that you want to measure after the course, then your then the design is gonna fall in. And if we are thinking about change management, culture change, leadership programs, definitely include um, practice in the group, role plays create together and for sure include leaders applying it with their own team and reporting back how it went. Mm -hmm. So the format needs to be something if you want to do it really effectively and efficiently, it needs to be something that they can and have to apply the format needs to help that they can and have to apply what they have learned right the next day back on the job that mm -hmm. helps with the dopamine that helps with the serotonin the con connection the everything it helps with learning it helps with engagement it helps everything um mm -hmm. and it's true for most if not all of the courses that I can think of it's just the difference is how much preparatory work do they need to do before they are mm -hmm. ready to do some application in in the class or outside the class but but um, apply 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 and ask right. them to report back because usually these programs are not a one-off but but they are, you know, they, we meet now and then we meet in two weeks time or one month or whatever. And then, and then have a, have a connection, be available as the mentor or the teacher or somebody who is your sponsor, whoever, who, who you can, they can come back to and, and, and ask if they got stuck or something that didn't work. So they feel the psychological safety that it's okay. And like, if you can't yeah. use it, it's useless. And then it is just learning for learning's sake, right? Which is all right. good too. I learn a few things just because of learning's sake, because I think mm -hmm. it's interesting. And then, then it comes to use or not comes to use. I'm a typical what learner if we are thinking about that. But, but um, when it comes to languages, it's a very interesting thing because um, when you are teaching English in Japan, um, your learners will have to be probably a little bit more um, creative in finding ways to apply their language. Whereas if you were speaking, if you were teaching Japanese people who had just moved to Canada, <laughs> that would be a lot easier for them to apply what they have learned. But we all we can all fix it. Mm -hmm. Especially now with the world of now with the world of uh, world of computers my kids are practicing their hungarian living in sweden or the other one lives in poland they use their hungarian with the people they play with they just pay attention to who speaks hungarian and then they switch to hungarian you don't need to be in hungary 